guys, time for a Yabo, which is yet another box opening. People ask all the time what a Yabo is. It originated in the pipe community, and I just like the term, so I use it all the time. By the way, this is a uh, Rake uh, P108, I believe. Let's see. Yes, a 108. I wouldn't have remembered the SB1. But this is a kind of a revisit. I absolutely love this knife. Super affordable, super smooth, super fun to play with. I love that it is a frame lock with an extra little lock there. I've talked about this one before, but it's just it's just really, really nice. This is a fantastic cheap knife. So just revisiting it and EDCing it today. This package is quite long. It's about three or four times the length of what you're looking at here. Um, but this is, make sure I don't get the address there. This is from Andy in Minnesota. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the box. And depending on what's inside, I might go outside if it doesn't fit in the screen here. But uh, yeah, spent $30 shipping this thing. So that was extremely generous. I know all about shipping. I ship a lot of trades, and it is not cheap. Usually. Sometimes it's cheap. It kind of depends on how fast you want things. But I always ship uh, USPS and I always ship priority. So sometimes it can get expensive. Read on camera. All right, I will do that. It says, hey Jeff, been a viewer for yours for since almost the beginning when you only had 20,000 subs. Just thought I would send you some things. Uh, a lot of it is cheap knives I picked up whenever possible. Uh, possibly could as a kid. Garage sales, pawn shops, daily searching for a new knife as a little kid after morning mowing lawns, excuse me, for hours and hours to get 20 bucks. I know that all about that. Uh, then spending it, uh, then spending it the same day on a knife. All thanks to your videos, getting me addicted to knives. Laugh out loud, but since then uh, I've grown my collection into different knives, and these have just been sitting in a drawer collecting dust. So I hope you can get some use out of them, uh, whether it's trading, selling, or keeping them for yourself. Do whatever you want with them. Thanks again for all the great content, and keep up the great work. And this is from Knives and Gear Seven on Instagram. Uh, P.S. I said I was going to send this box a month ago, but work caught up with me and haven't had uh a day to send it until now laugh out loud yeah no that's totally obviously it's extremely generous this could take you five years to send it's very nice of you and especially spending all that money on shipping uh it's something that's often not talked about but yeah shipping costs money it's not free so that, that was extremely nice of you i'm gonna um let's see i'll take i'll take everything out of the box oh yeah there's a bunch of stuff all right i'm gonna take everything out of the box put it on the table here and i'll be right back all right there is a ton of stuff here so uh, I'm going to start with the non-knife stuff, and then we'll get into all the different knives. Super cool. I see some things here I've never seen before, ever. So first off, there's a couple little flashlights. It's cool, a little push button. I like that. Very useful. There's also this flashlight here. And I've never seen this one. This looks like a, well, actually, there's some markings on here. Oh, it's a stream light. How about that? That's interesting. Oh, green. It's pretty cool. It's got the woodland camo on there. I forget what green's good for, if that's for blood trails or something. So that is actually, that's pretty cool. I don't have anything like that. So that's awesome. You gotta zoom in on this so I can read it. All right, looks like outdoor angler. Cool little jumping bass there. You never go wrong with uh, more multi-tools, all kinds of little tools on the outside. Ooh, spring-loaded. That's always very good. Nice big handles too, so it's comfortable. That's cool, I like that. There's another multi-tool here. So, oh, that actually locks it, how about that? Never seen that before. That's different. That's pretty cool. Actually locks it shut. There's a little bale here, some scissors. I don't know if there's any markings on this, but it's pretty neat. The main pen blade and looks like a can opener or bottle opener. That is a bottle opener and flathead screwdriver. It's pretty cool. I've never actually seen seen one with a clasp that locks it. Oops. Oh, okay. So that's that piece is in there. So that hooks in. So that keeps that closed. Very cool. I like that. All right. So then we have this. I'm not sure exactly what this, obviously it's just a cowboy boot, but it has an open bottom. 
I don't think that connects. That's separate from this opening. I'm not really sure. I can use it to hold the knife. That's cool. A little knife holder for your desk. I'm not sure what it's actually for, but that's what I'm gonna use it for. I'm gonna put this on my desk and I'm gonna have a little knife in there so I can play around with it. So that's cool. Next, we have a big old belt buckle. This one's actually really neat. It's got a dollar coin on there. Genuine turquoise, as it says on the back, and a German silver. Handcrafted in the USA. That's actually pretty neat. I don't wear belt buckles, but who knows? When I lose weight, and nice and skinny, I can show off my belt, because right now it's kind of hidden underneath my body somewhere. <laughs> Maybe I will actually wear this. I do have a pair of cowboy boots, so this would uh, accent those very nicely. So we will see. When I'm uh, nice and skinny, I think I'll try that out. All right, so this thing is pretty cool. It says Sleepy Hollow First National Bank. Uh, Hillbilly Bank. Whether you're saving for a still, a new tall hat, or a jug to fill, put your earnings in the slot pretty darn soon. You got a lot. The Great Smoky Mountains. I like this a lot. And obviously there's a slot for the coins, but I have no idea how to, how to get money out. Maybe you have to shake it out when you're done. It seems like there's something in there. A piece of cardboard or paper or something. All right, so the last non-knife related item is actually super cool. Snoopy's Harp. A boy named Charlie Brown. This is from 1969, and this is, I, I want to say they call it a Jew's harp, but I know there's something else. So here's a shot of it. I actually used to have one of these, and it was rusted, all right? You put this basically in your lips, and you twang that as you're, you know, pushing air through it, and it's very, very cool. Uh, I know my wife will probably end up playing with this more than I am, because she's the musician, but I used to have one, I used to love it. I got one on my trip with my grandfather when we went out to the uh, Northwest uh, part of the United States. Unfortunately, mine rusted out completely, so I had to throw it out because I couldn't use it anymore. So this will actually get used and played and it's just super, super cool. So thank you so much for that. All right, so on to the knives. Tons of fixed blades here, some really interesting folders. Let's go over some of the folders. First one, it's just a scorpion theme. Looks like a maybe a liner lock. Yep, liner lock, no markings, but still, cool little folder, good beater knife. Then we have a frost cutlery stiletto style folder. Looks very similar to like a uh, cold steel tie light in design, but pretty beefy, pretty big. That's really cool, like that. Then we have a, another little liner lock here. Looks like maybe used to have a, a thumb stud, but it is a flipper design as well. I don't see markings on this. I'm not sure if this is one of the Ozark Trail ones or not. Kind of reminds me of it, maybe it is. It's been a while since I was playing with those. But still, good little uh, knife drawer knife. Then we have a very cool old slip joint. And this one, let's zoom in on that Tang stamp here. This one was made by Remington, UMC. You can see the uh, cartridge for the shield. That is really, really neat. I like that a lot. Love the old slip joints, just really, really fun to collect. All sorts of patterns, all different kinds of designs from a whole bunch of companies. Next, this one is really, really awesome. Um, unfortunately, the leaf spring broke, I believe, because this uh, looks like an automatic toothpick. So you basically have a safety there, all right? Safety switch locks your button. And then when you push this, it would automatically open up. But even though the spring is broken on the inside, it still just works like a, uh, a button lock. All right, so when it's open, there's a little bit of play in there, but it won't close without pushing that button. So you push the button to close it. That is really, really cool. Nice vintage pocket knife. Love it. Love the colors there, too. Pretty unique. Very different. All right, so the next one is super, super unique. I've never seen anything like this before. It says Wild Steer, and it's marked France. All right. All kinds of stuff going on here. Pocket clip on this side, which is interesting because it's left side carry. It looks like maybe, yeah, maybe these could be swapped so it's right side carry. We have basically, you know, screws so you don't need a tool to undo that. That's pretty interesting. So anyway, let's open this guy up. Looks kind of like a pick lock. Oh, okay, there we go. Let's see, this This is like a safety, and this pivots. All right, so that pushes the lockout. This thing is funky. So that pushes your lockout, and this basically just keeps that from moving. All right, so when you're opening it, you can unlock that first. 
could snap it open or it'd probably be easier to push this down first and then open it and then that locks it back up again um, like this not too bad this is dig these big old screws are digging into my hand but if it was right side carry yeah because over here it's it's totally comfortable it's fine so if I swap the pocket clip these will be on the back side and then uh, ooh, actually it's way comfortable if you choke up put your middle finger in that choil there that is cool that is very different yeah I mean France wild steer never seen anything like that that is quite unique and this will go right into my uh, collection of unique folders so thank you so much for that that is super cool all right so the next knife you guys don't need any introduction you probably know this this is a browse blades bionic this is a 2.0 <laughs> and the serial number is 69 which is awesome so this one is in silver it's a fantastic edc knife flipper design you can see the Usually these are marked under the tang. Yep, there it is, the serial number. If I get the light to hit it just right. All right, you can kind of see it there, number 69 and a 1000. So that is super cool, very usable, very nice EDC knife. Actually, I'm going to swap that rake knife for this today, and I will EDC this. That is absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for that. All right, so on to some of the fixed blades. There's a two-piece throwing knife set here which is very cool. These are marked uh, Eagle Eyes. Love throwing knives. Don't have small ones like this, so that will definitely get used. I will certainly play with those. That is a ton of fun. Love knives you can play with. So now we're into the uh, the fixed blades here. We got a Gerber, Bear Grills knife. Don't believe I've ever had this, this version of it. It's pretty cool, actually feels really good. I was never really specifically into the Bear Grill knives, but it's nice to be able to, to try them out. And speaking of which, there's also this Bear Grylls knife. Pretty cool as well. Obviously this one's made by Gerber. You guys are familiar with that design. And it looks like this also has maybe the ferro rod in the end. Actually, I think I might have had this before. This seems vaguely familiar, but yeah. I think I might have actually had that one. But that is really cool. I like that. Then we have a custom here. This one says Rocco's Custom Knives. So this is made in 2015. It's called the Viking. It's got uh, ADCR V2 steel, black micarta, and hand-stitched leather sheath. This is pretty cool. I like that spike in the bottom. Reminds me of an Ontario knife. That is really nice. Wow, it's actually super comfortable. That's a nice little custom knife. Nice. I like it. All right, so next we have this knife. This is also definitely a custom, but I do not know that marking. It's just an R. But super, super thick stock here. Jeez, that is, <laughs> that is not going to break. That is a stout little knife. All right, so here is a vintage knife. This made by Western Cutlery. Very cool piece of knife history. Very common design as well. I like it a lot. I wonder what the, uh, the blade looked like originally because obviously this was sharpened quite a bit. There's a swedge there naturally, so maybe this was the original size. Uh, but yeah, nice big grip for a smaller blade. So you got lots of control there. That is really cool. All right, so next one, this is marked HK. Oh, pretty cool, Damascus blade. Looks like maybe a bone, bone handles. A little bit of file work in here. Some brass bolsters, brass pins. No markings on this. I actually really like the design and it's quite hefty and chunky. Uh, if I had to guess, it's probably like a Pakistani made knife, but this seems pretty well done. I'm actually curious as to who made this now because there is no markings on it, but uh, it actually feels really nice. It's a very usable fixed blade there. All right, next one here. This definitely looks like some frost stuff. We got the Eagle on the front, totally like 80s, you know, into early 90s design there. Wow, this one's funky. <laughs> this looks like a rhino. Yeah, Pakistan. So a Pakistan knife. This thing is super chunky, but actually extremely, extremely comfortable. So yeah, I mean, I will tell you my youth was chock full of these. When I went to flea markets, this is what they had. A plethora of big old, you know, stabilized color wood handles. I mean, this is classic 90s, 
you know, Pakistani knives. Cheap, cutlery, flea markets, garage sales, you name it. People bought these because they're cool and they're super cheap. I mean, this originally was probably 15 or 20 bucks, but it's definitely a little piece of knife history. A lot of people have uh, gone through phases with knives like this, so it's super cool. And the next one is no exception. In fact, I think I've had this exact one with the, uh, the guard here, <laughs> but it's still cool. Let's see, sheath says uh, the Galactic Warrior, the Galactic Warrior. That right there, frost cutlery, it's written on the blade, Galactic Warrior, yeah. This was shop at home TV, surprise. <laughs> but I have to say, still love it. I mean, it just brings back my, my childhood. This is the very cool knives to buy. This is the one you're showing off to your friends and they're like totally amazed by it. But uh, yeah, even though it's cheap, it's super fun. A lot of fun. It's funny because this brings more of a smile on my face than like a really cool new Spyderco or something. It's just, uh, it's classic. It, it kind of makes me laugh, but it was a huge, huge part of uh, me getting into knives, you know? Without cheap knives, most of us would probably quit the hobby, to be honest, because that's what really gets a lot of people into the hobby is getting a bunch of variety and then eventually you go, yeah, I want something a little bit better quality. But yeah, so here's the last one in the package. This one says white tail cutlery. Wow, this is beautiful. This is really, really nice. Love the firework on here, love the stag. The handles, classic, just buoy design. Oh, I'm into this one. It's got a thin little tapered guard. Whitetail USA, yeah, this, I really dig this. This is a knife I'd carry. I would uh, get a razor edge on that. It's probably a softer steel, not a big deal though. Still very usable. Just really classic design. Love that. The back says 440, German stainless. Pakistan as well, still Pakistani made. But uh, yeah, I'd still, I'd carry that. It's a very cool looking knife. This would definitely go with the cowboy boots and the belt buckle. So uh, yeah, that concludes the massive box of steel. So that's it, nothing to look at of the table here. <laughs> Thank you again, Andy. That was really, really cool of you. Total blast in the past. A lot of fun stuff. A lot of usable knives there as well. A couple that are going to go into the collection. So, I mean, huge two thumbs up. I really, really appreciate it. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have an awesome day, and I'll see you soon. Take care.